I'm looking at a tree and we are in the way of those, uh, those wild dog. I hope that they come in this direction. But we thought that we'd celebrate this tree with you. Now you know that uh, I have quite a fondness for very large trees here at Juma and I go out of my way to walk in all the undiscovered places over here. Well, discovered but yet by, by me undiscovered. And uh, in order to find these big trees. And when we find them, I like to show you them. And this is possibly the widest, oldest Tambuti tree that I've ever found at Juma. This one right here. There is one that's taller than this, close to Philemon's dip uh, cut line. That's very close to where we stay. This one here is probably about three or four miles from where we stay and definitely is in terms of width, I think. And just look at all this extra growth on it. Definitely one of the oldest, if not the oldest and largest in terms of volume, Tambuti tree that I've ever seen especially here at Juma. Now what, what immediately struck me was the fact that these buttresses have become so prominent. Usually trees with these prominent buttresses, these extensions out here, are very, very old. You know a tree has gotten old when it has this. And they use that as a way of increasing the surface area of the actual trunk and to create these points of strength. The taller the tree gets, the bigger the tree gets, the more wind resistance it puts up. And I mean, if you've seen those wind turbines with those blades, you'll know that the wind has got some pretty powerful, uh, it's got pretty powerful force when you put up any sort of resistance. And the tree needs these very strong buttressed, uh, well, a buttressed stem going into the roots to give it the, the ability to withstand a storm. Now, roots with shallow root systems, or trees with shallow root systems, like marula trees, for instance, quite often get blown over here in storms. Jackalberries are the same, fever trees are the same, but yet these Tambuti trees just sort of last and last and last. And another tree that does the same thing is the Balanites or the torchwood tree. And we've got a massive torchwood tree here that has also got these buttresses on them. And uh, it's just nice to show you these things because you don't really spend much time doing it. This is the torchwood tree. Well known for its fruit that everything, man and beast, love. Um, and this is a very old one as well. And here you can see the much better developed buttresses that this particular tree has. And that's because these trees get taller than the Tambuti trees. So these trees easily get another 30 feet or so taller than the Tambuti trees and therefore offer a much bigger uh, or much more leverage when the wind blows on it. Therefore, the tree itself has evolved these much bigger and much more well-developed uh, buttresses. Isn't that cool? It's nice. So this is an endangered tree. It doesn't really occur much out of the range of the Kruger National Park. And so we protect, we protect this tree wherever we find it. They do get harvested. Um, quite often you'll find squares cut out of the bark of this tree. The, 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 the bark itself contains some saponins in it and you can make a nice foamy wash that people wash themselves. You feel quite refreshed and rejuvenated after that. Um, I'm hoping to show you some of that wash one of these days when I find one that has got some bark to offer. But also, uh, it creates an, uh, a, a, a mixture that you can drink as an emetic, so that induces vomiting, so when people are feeling sick and they need to uh, get whatever's in their tummy out, this would be one of the, the barks that they use to induce vomiting. Torchwood tree, one of my favorites. Right.